Let's do it. Good to see you guys. Oh, Good to see you guys. Come on through. We are ready. Let me show you around. This is our lounge area, which you're looking at here. The reason we have this is we serve a ton of people. They need places to sit before their adjustments. Everybody just comes in. We sell it and serve it as a lifestyle. So people are regularly coming here. This isn't just a back pain treatment kind of place. So people are coming in to get tuned up and need a place to sit. We have three adjusting areas. All tables do something differently, but at the end of the day, they're all going to impact you similar. Cool. The back side of the office is where we do a lot of the spinal correction. So putting the spine, like when you work out to grow muscle, you put time under tension in order to grow it. Well, we put the spine in the right position and then keep it there for a certain amount of time in order to remodel it. Similar to what braces do to teeth. Nice. So that's that. All right, so back here is where we do the x-rays. This is where we do all the analysis. After we take the x-rays, we measure for misalignment, posture, etc. And um, then we get them out there and the thumb begins. All right. Yep. Excited. Need a need a realignment, that's for sure. So have a seat. Alright. I'm um, on one of these? Yeah. Alright. So the first thing we do in the office is we take a balance disc that you could order on Amazon. Very simple to get, 12 to 15 bucks, and we overinflate it so it's about this size. The reason we do this is because that wobble movement, which I'm about to take you guys through create something in the spine called imbibition, where every day micro stress. Imbibition? Imbibition. Uh -huh. imbibition. And what it does is micro stresses from posture, biohacking, working out, all the things that all the things we do on our body, even emails, deadlines, all stresses, yep. create stress, inflammation, et cetera, and it creates tension in the system. So hygienically, not from a back pain, neck pain, or cure perspective, just hygiene, keeping up with the body so it has shelf life, we need to be able to do spine-specific things, not just stretches. We can sit here and do a stretch because I have a tight piriformis, but if my discs and nerves exiting out of my spine aren't greased up, if they don't have that spinal D40, then it's not going to feed the muscle what it needs, right? All muscle is servant to the nerve. So we start here by lubricating the spine, essentially, bringing the spine through specific movements. Flexion and extension is one of them, okay, like this. Okay. And what this does is pre-adjustment is it gets it ready. It preps it. It's like marinating it before we go ahead and cook it. Ooh, I and like these that. are And these are spine-specific things. We're hitting the front and the back of the disc when we hit things like this. We're specifically using the trunk of the spine, which you need, to go into extension so our joints have that movement. Does that make sense? We're very focused culturally on stretching or strengthening muscle, and it's needed, it's important, but step one, in my opinion, should always be center first, foundation first. It should be spine, joints, discs, because that's where all the soft tissue attaches. Does that make sense? So that's part one. The second part is we want to do rotation. We want to hit the outer parts of the disc because what happens is like when we're driving, we all do the, the pimpling a little bit. When we're sitting or we're analyzing, we naturally kind of just shift. <laughs> think about it. If I'm at the grocery store, and if I'm at Disney. Exactly. And, every, and, and then, you know, people come and then they're like, hey, you know what? You know, is my low back or everything messed up because I'm sitting Indian style a lot? My point is we are always putting our body in weird position. Yep. If you stand in line at Whole Foods, wait long enough and you end up favoring one side. We yeah, shift, you know, if you're at Disney World, you shift. So the shifting creates lateral stress on the discs on the outside. So what we want to do is we hit front and back okay. from this standpoint of stress. Now we're going to do rotations to hit the outer parts of the disc. And the key thing here is you don't want to muscle it. You want to get your trunk and spine to actually do that twisting. You'll feel a catch right as you get to the right point. You'll feel it. Let me come you'll feel it right there, a little catch. Ooh. These things are made and designed. My favorite thing about this is we're in a fast-paced world, high tech, high touch. It's like, hey, I need to get in and out. We're looking for the most efficient ways to kind of optimize the body yep. as a pit stop. We don't have time to put oils on you know, every single week, do hours of work in order to get a 20% result. Yep. So we're looking for the fastest way to do it. That's why these are my warm-ups, and that's why I recommend these is Everyone have them at the home, at the desk, wherever they are, because it takes two minutes to literally do. You do some front and back like this, yeah. you hit your sides, you get your whole spine warmed up, it gets loose, you activate a lot of your nervous system, put you in a peak state, and you're ready to rock and roll. So I feel pretty good. I feel yeah, good. you can do that anywhere. Yeah. You can do it anywhere. Nice. Absolutely. Let's rock and roll. Cool. Step two is my favorite part. We put these. So uh, you pointed out that I needed something. What yeah, was you, on my back? you know when you were stretching over here, yeah. you have limited extension in your spine. I do. Yeah, you do. No, that's why you always want to. Limited extension, dude. He's got limited extension. <laughs> that's why I preach and teach. Step one should always be joint health. Oh. All right, so this will go to your forehead. Okay. okay. This will come underneath like this. Step to the wall. Yeah. 
This is going to come underneath the base of your skull. And Anthony, your hands will grab underhand grip like this. Yep, so grab it underhand, just like that. Good, that'll come to your forehead so it's hygienic. Now feet to the base of the wall, and what you're going to do is almost like a squat position, you're going to drop down. So go ahead and drop. Use your own body weight to do it. And when you drop down, what are you feeling right now? Uh, like it's pulling in my head. Like, <laughs> is it a pull like a, like a stretch, almost like a traction, like it's lifting up? Mm, yeah. 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 The purpose of this is to target two different areas of the spine because all day we're in flexion. Our heads are moving forward and it creates a lot of micro stress on the spine, the discs, the joints, etc. So being able to come in real quick and reverse engineer the postural stress that we put on our body every day through carrying babies, through workload, through emails, etc is beneficial because it unlocks the spine. It kind of, in a sense, regenerates it. It helps put it into a better position, helps mitigate some of the inflammatory response that comes with physical aspects of life. And then guess what? After we wobble, after we do this right here, we're able to then go in and deliver a very powerful adjustment and it only takes a couple minutes. So that's yeah. part one. Part, part one. two now is my favorite. We're gonna get a little lower. This will come here now. And we're gonna go under the chin. So I'm gonna look all the way up. Yep. Spread your feet, shoulder width apart. Boy, you sweating. We're activating yeah, that nervous system. Right, that hurts yeah. the spotlight. He's a sweater. Right, now, go ahead and drop down. Yeah. And as you drop down, this is reinforcing what we call the cervical curve in the neck. We're born as we start to get tummy Ooh. time. We form that shape in the spine, and we want to reinforce it throughout life because it's critical, it's important, it's necessary. So this movement right here first, the first one got the top part of his neck. This is now going to get the mid to the lower portion. So what you do now is you come up. And now this is designed to be repetitious. So we don't want to sit and hold for a while. Drop back down. Yep. Time under tension. Five, four, three, two, one. Right back up. And someone could even get this and do it at home, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Abso bar. Absolutely. You could do it on a pull-up bar. We have them mounted on the wall for security. Or for safety. Not security. Yeah. <laughs> Let me reverse that. Drop down again. We have them mounted on the wall for safety purposes, but you could do these on your bathroom door. You could do them on a pull-up door. This is all chiropractic's bread and butter, and it's all spinal hygiene. This is keeping up with your spine on a home care kind of perspective. Ooh. So you guys warmed up? You sweat? Yeah, man. Those yeah. feel good. All right. Now let's get to the good stuff. All right. Let's do it. Well, today to day, you need to be putting work into the wobble. You need to be putting your joints into extension, not through stretching, but through that movement. That inhibition movement, that inhibition movement, excuse me, not inhibition. The inhibition movement on the wobble cushion helps push out inflammation on the disc. It helps squish it and then open it up. The reason we do that, and so you could also get more extension into your spine. You know, the majority is actually really good because I'm sure a lot of your audience is kind of feeling when they bring their body, even their head or their low back into extension, they either get pain, they feel stiffness, or they might even get lightheaded or dizzy. And that's a very common problem with the population right now. And the reason is, is because we're so, we're so much time in flexion. We're constantly in flexion. Even if you're a healthy person, we naturally, we're, we're on screen time. Yeah. You know, and if we're not in screen time, we're in training mode, we're lifting things. If you're a parent, you're carrying your child all the time. If you're a mom nursing your child, trying to just optimize your body, you gotta realize that flexion destroys the spine. It can do it and in the short term. It's designed for it, the spine's super strong. But over the long term, it creates a lot lot of chronic low levels of stress and that creates inflammation in the joints and in the overall body so it really puts in uh, unfortunately a lot of damage and so I best thing for extension aside from you know wobble is the adjustment because the adjustment helps the spine get into extension easier by removing the stress from the joint taking it through a space in the right direction at the right time the right way which is very important and it helps the spine and the joints regain instantly range of motion in fact no matter how bad someone is the very first thing someone can expect when they start getting adjusted and I call it organic adjustments meaning when it's done it doesn't have to be my way but when it's done in a very good way when it's done you know, with finesse from someone who really has mastered the craft. The mm -hmm. very first thing you'll notice is they'll it's get art. it no matter how, because it is an art. Yeah. It's three branches and one is that art. It's like being yeah. a chef. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hey, I, food's awesome. Yeah. You can cook food and ruin it. You don't stop eating food. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just say, hey, that chef didn't cook it up right. Yeah. Well, chiropractic unfortunately follows under that in yeah. a lot of ways. It, it kind of parallels. Well, so, does, uh, so does medicine. Yeah, medicine does in certain ways when it comes to surgery. Like, hey, I want the best surgeon, the one with the not best hands. I want the best team with my surgery. 
surgery, you know? Uh, but when it comes to low-level stuff, like basic day-to-day -day ibuprofens and prescriptions, well, I go to this doctor, I get 800 ibuprofen. I go to another doctor, I get eight, ibuprofen 800 is the same all across the board. Yeah, all yeah. I gotta do is write the script. Yeah. The only thing that changes is the hand, you know, the, yeah. the autograph. Uh, but with chiropractic, you know, they could follow, for example, a certain technique, you know, but if, they're, if they haven't mastered the craft or if they're not constantly working on that, it's like an artist who isn't staying in touch with his craft. Yep. You know what I mean? So craft is, you can't underplay it. It's so important. But either way, getting back to that, when the adjustment's done correctly, the first thing someone will notice when they get off the table, regardless of condition, I, I, every time, nine out of ten times, is they go like this. Wow. Wow. We didn't put him through a 20 minute stretch. We didn't give him some specific, you know, exercise that only chiropractors were taught, you know, or something we saw on YouTube. It's just the adjustments bread and butter lies in improving the integrity of the spine. And with that comes instantly sometimes range of motion changes. So first thing I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm getting my spine taken care of, meaning I'm getting it adjusted, I'm maintaining its position, its angles, I'm neutralizing the stress response that the spine endures day to day. And then from a home care perspective to upkeep on the hygiene in case you travel or you can't get to the office on a regular basis is you gotta do the wobble movements. You do traction, you do certain things that are recommended by the chiropractor based on x-rays for example, <laughs> so it's specific or individualized to that person because you just wanna, you don't, what you don't want is you just don't want to go out and start hanging yourself over a door on that last movement right there. Because yeah. if there's a, if someone has arthritis in their neck, if they have a history of vertigo or tinnitus yeah. or blood flow problems, this can create symptoms. I still think it's healthy for them in one fashion uh, if they know why they need to go through something like that. But without an x-ray, without any guidance or leadership, they could be like, oh, that hurt my neck. What? I'm never doing that again. But if someone can see like, wow, I've got, you know, I've got uneven wear and tear in my spine and joints and that degeneration's pushing into my spinal cord and irritating the sensory nerves that are in that area, well then I gotta get through that. You know what I mean? It's a weakness, but at least I see so we can navigate the waters a little bit better. Yeah, that, that's my point. So they're all healthy, but you gotta have leadership when it comes to the spine because you start putting your body into certain things and traction can hurt you. Yeah. Even the wobbles, you know, uh, there's a lady, quick story, who came in here, couldn't even walk. And unfortunately, with her work, and she lives like an hour plus away from here, she can't get it off, and she was just here last night. And when I said, hey, are you at least doing the wobble movements I gave you to kind of like buy you time before you can get in here? Because she's in the beginning phase of care, and it's very crisis. Yeah. You know, like, okay, she went from not being able to walk to now she can return to work. Yeah. So that's a win for her. Yeah. She's getting an hour more sleep. It's not like, hey, we're, you know, like, yeah. I'm not putting her on a commercial yet, you know, yeah. type of deal. But she's in progression, but she can't get here often. So we need these little wins. Yeah. But my point is, I said, hey, are you at least doing the wobbles? I just told her this last night. And she said, no, it's so painful. I can't even do those. Mm -hmm. So my point is, is not everybody's going to be able, like you guys yeah. are super healthy, you know, to get on those wobbles and just start busting out those yeah. movements. For some, they're going to go into it and they're going to get a sharp shock. They're yeah. going to get pain. And that's just another kind of check engine light that they need to get that x-ray done. They need to yep. see why they have that check engine light so then the person caring for their spine can then work around it and obviously cater something it's, to them. It's their body trying to communicate to it's them their body that, that it needs attention. Them. Something, exactly. something is off. Yeah, I can't stress that enough. Uh oh, All right, it's so showtime. Here we it go. It is showtime. <laughs> so right here, I'm going to start down at the base of his spine. When we start to motion, I'm on L5 right now, which is really the last <clears throat> vertebra in the lower spine. It's right here. Nerves in that area are very important, controlling motor functions as well as their connection to organ and visceral physiology. And we come right through here, and this side has some rotation in it. So we have elevated musculature. One of the things as a chiropractor we look for week in and week out when we're just checking aside from x-rays is we're doing posture check. We're doing joint play. We want to see what's the health of that segment that I'm touching because when a segment in a person's spine loses its mobility, this becomes stressful to the brain. Mm. And that's why we even adjust in the first place. You see, by the time, even if you didn't feel this, we already know we have a little bit of an extension issue through here, mm -hmm. but let's say you say, hey, Zeph, you know what? I don't even have a back pain. And then I come in here and I start to motion this joint, and I say, you know what? Well, I feel rotation right through here. I see compensation through the musculature. This is all happening because the brain feels that it's lost motion in that segment. So it's creating a neuro, meaning nerve, musculoskeletal response to protect that vertebra because it's the body smart or stupid. 
smart. It's super smart. Yeah. But we always try to override it. We try yeah. to get in the yeah. way. And then we say, you know what? The day you do feel that, you're going to take something or try to stretch it out. Yeah. And that's okay. You can lengthen the muscle if it's a tight low back. But if you're not adjusting the spine to restore the movement to change the response up into the brain, so the brain then changes the response down here, in my opinion only, you're wasting your time and you're not going to get shelf life on your back. And at the end of the day, why do we take care of our bodies is for shelf life. Yeah. You know what I mean? We want to avoid unnecessary medical costs. We want to avoid surgery at all costs, pharmaceutical costs. And we want to have function out of our body. So what controls all function? Back. Your nervous system. And where does it live? Oh, I was going to say that. Part two of it is here in the back. <laughs> you didn't give me enough time, yeah. Doc. I don't know why I ask those questions. Yeah, I, yeah. I hate those questions. I never answer them right. But you get my point. You know, part, part one is here. Part two is here. So regardless, remove, you know, for people out there that are fans of chiropractic, that are cynical. I love hugging haters, and I do it every day through our adjustment. Yeah. You know, I take cynics that are at last resort, plan C and D, and they're like, you know, this is this is it, I don't even want to, they come in here like this, you know, and they're full of, they're just full of almost, I, I don't know if the right word is hatred, but you kind of, their body language is not good. Yeah, yeah. They treat my it's staff definitely. bad, they're short with me. Definitely. And then we came up with this expression, uh, someone on my team did say, man, these adjustments don't lie. And I'm gonna to get to the adjustment in a second, but yeah, it, it say, all, get there. Yeah, it, we'll, we'll get to it. It all, <laughs> it all makes sense, and I think it's important for the audience to know because the reality is, is adjustments when done right speak for themselves because yeah. they change your state and your breathing pattern instantly. And if they change that, then they're changing your physiology, right? Yeah. So the whole point is, is if we're adjusting and we're changing the state, regardless of what someone believes, then we know that we're gonna put that person in a positive place. But either way, here we go. So let's get to work. I'm All just right. gonna get, when I adjust, I go right into adjusting. Do it. Big breath in for me again. I'm gonna start in his thoracic spine. This is the sympathetic portion of his nervous system. The fact that he sweats a lot lets me know that his sympathetic nervous system is overstimulated. He stays in a dominant sympathetic state. I don't need evidence for that either, by the way. The only evidence I need is he sweats all the time. And if he sweats all the time, well, sweat is, sweat is a sympathetic response. You know, so that's all I need. I don't need another paper. It's like brushing teeth. You know, if, I, if someone showed me brushing teeth was no longer effective or good for you, I'd still brush my teeth. All right, so we're gonna put some motion into this area, broad spectrum style. Good. Look to the right for me. Good. Elevated musculature all the way down, complete guarding from about T1 down to L5. So I started here, but you can actually notice it all the way through, even before he rotates. So we're gonna come through here. Good. Oh. And put some motion into that area. Elevated musculature compared to the left side. So, about here, so. Exactly, so that would be like asymmetry. Oh my. I'm going to scoop into the lordosis down at C5. That's what we just did. Now lay on the right side, face me. Oh. That felt great. Yeah. <laughs> and notice there's no whipping with that, but what I'm doing is I'm going into the curvature and supporting the angle in that area. I'm working with it, I'm opening it up, and I'm also putting your spine into extension when I do that. I'm getting the joints used to going back into extension. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh. Good. That was L4. Now we're going to get below that. And again, this side, we're going to put the spine in extension. Behind the scenes. Everything chiropractically is taking a person from flexion almost and into extension. Mm -hmm. The spine loves extension. Woo. On your back. It's, sort of, it's almost like our spine is... You got some uh, paper on your head there, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, bro. It's yeah, that sweat. Talk to me. I'm listening. It's hey, almost hey. like our spine's like a garden hose. But it can get kinked up. It is the garden hose example. Yeah, it's in, a great in certain, example. In certain yeah. spots. Old school teacher, come on up for me. Right. I use this block to give me a steeper angle on the spine. Legs out straight. When someone has a lot of compression or straightening in the spine, take a big breath in, hold it, exhale. Woo! Okay, now let the head go all the way back. We're gonna drop his head so it's into extension. Big hug, big hug. I'm gonna come through here. Good. Nice. That one felt great. <laughs> what I want you to do, I'm going to say it now, I don't want to put him on the spot, but everybody watching, check his breathing as I go and adjust him. You're going to see him involuntarily change, which is a beautiful it sign. It feels slower and deeper. Yeah, absolutely. Sympathetic people that are in that state have shallow breathing, high blood pressure, they're more tense, they're more stiff. So immediately when someone's breath changes, it's the first way we know we've shifted them from a sympathetic state to more of a parasympathetic rest, digest, heal breath. <sighs> And that's what we love about exercise. You exercise when you walk out of the gym, you feel like Superman, you know? Yeah. Your breath has changed. The adjustment does it in two seconds. Yeah. Slide down towards your feet. And like, so you're talking about going from flexion, which is like 
sort of like forward, forward, forward bent mm -hmm. to extension back. Correct. With our phones, and, oh, Ooh. I'm adjusting his shoulders now to open them back up. When someone's in flexion a lot, and this isn't again, don't look for. We're not looking for a diagnosis. Mm -hmm. We're looking just, hey, what are day-to-day -day applications that I can make sure my body is staying upright? Well, it's common when people are in flexion over time, not overnight, the shoulders start to round forward. It's common, everybody knows that, right. right? So after adjusting, I like to get onto the shoulders and really open them up so they can stay in a neutral position. Sweating up your paper. <laughs> All right. Look to the left one. Grabbing handles or not? No, nah, no need. This hand's going to come up here. Good. What I want you to do, though, is cross your left ankle over your right ankle. Oh! <laughs> that the burning <laughs> tactic. That was. That was. My Got friend. him. All right. Here we go. Big breath in for me. Exhale. Good. Yep, I got your arm. You're going to feel my hand right over your spine and a light drop right in this area. Beautiful. All right, now turn over on your back for me, big dog. Oh, this feels great. Yeah, lay back. So, I've cleared the spine, but I'm a fan of when someone's first or second adjustment. I like making sure that the entire physical body is getting proper input into the central nervous system up into the brain, and I wanna make sure we go through that. So I don't always adjust the feet, but I make sure, especially on those first couple adjustments, that I'm checking those feet, that the feet have proper motion. Cool. Because when feet move right, will support good spinal health. Good. See, did you feel that? Yeah. That was his fibula head. His fibula head's responsible in this area of his body for making sure this foot can do this. So a lot of people will get shin splints just because this area of the knee has just slightly shifted. Sometimes you don't even feel it unless you're going for a run or you're actually putting your body under stress. If it sits there long enough, it can affect everything from IT band attachment, mechanics, everything, sports, recovery, you name it. It can even affect and influence plantar fasciitis. Now, I don't know what information's out there that says that and how many studies have been done, but I'm a devout practitioner. I mean, I'm just hundreds of people all the time. And I yeah. can tell you that's a common denominator that just I see, and I see it every time it's as clear as day. So. Yeah, your, your pattern recognition is second to none. Every time I come in here, there's like dozens of people waiting. Yeah. Oh, he oh, sees ah. a lot of people. Oh, ah. Uh, Close. So what you see here is I'm motioning his occiput in his upper neck to see if there's any restriction or a lack of joint movement, getting back to that segmental movement. We want the spine moving globally together perfectly, in sync and in tune, but we also want it locally, making sure all planes and lines of drive are moving. And you can feel, Anthony, tell me if you feel the difference between right here and right there. You feel how that's smooth and easy? Yes. And then I get there, and yeah. it's like a little bit of a wall, right? For sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that for you. <laughs> Keep together. You're getting a hookup. Oh my gosh. Hey. That was intense. <laughs> <laughs> you go, hey, that was intense. <laughs> Grab my hand. Come on up. Oh. We reinforced the adjustment with this instrument. <laughs> this fires off positive neurology and positive feedback loops. Reinforces the alignment I just adjusted. And just I call it like icing on the cake. It's the supercharge. It feels I feel it like tingling in my hands. Yeah. If people feel it tingling in the hands, it's usually because there's compression and possibly leading to generation on the neck. And when I'm firing onto the receptors over the joints, it electrically gives that surge. I still need to get my x-ray too. You do. So that's what that's what you guys use as like for, for tracking and monitoring progress. 100 percent pre and yes. post x-ray. Okay. Because you can't argue with that. No, you can never argue with it. Well, there's two things you can't argue with. Subjectively, how a person feels, yeah. not even placebo, length over time, like there's no cap or ceiling. You know, like people will You're come getting in. getting rid of I'll migraines take, and getting rid of back pain. <clears throat> for sure. If someone comes in and they were, you know, migraine sufferer for five years, and then they start getting adjusted, and within an X amount of time, all of a sudden it's getting less and less and less, it doesn't matter what doctor tells that person. If that person's having no more migraines, and not only just no more migraines, but they're consistently with no migraines, even yeah. under the same stress load, 
then that's a win-win, right? Mm -hmm. So then when that x-ray comes, because just because they're functioning better doesn't mean their x-ray changes. You know what I mean? So the minute symptom's gone doesn't mean their x-rays are now perfect. Right. It's still time. You know what I mean? But functionally, the body's improving. It's healing. It's less inflamed. So they're like, man, I'm really getting more out of my body. Can't argue with that. Then over time, we take a new x-ray, and we're looking for those positional changes, for sure, because you can't argue nice. that. How do you feel, man? I feel great. <laughs> I need to do that more often. <laughs> yeah. Woo. All right, so Anthony right now is wearing a head weight. This is native to the chiropractic. It's kind of our bread and butter. Again, after the adjustment, we want to wear a head weight. His head weight right now is six pounds, and he's wearing this to kind of tighten up the ligaments, reinforce the adjustment we did. So when he takes this off, he's walking out of here not only in a peak state, but his body, his ligaments, it's charged, it's tight, and it's ready to go. Another reason why we like to do these is because, again, all day, I know this is going to be repetitive, but that's, you know, there's common denominators in the downfall of kind of why we feel the way we do, is we're in flexion a lot, it starts to stretch out those ligaments, starts to create a lot of stress and strain. So as we went back this way, now we're gonna head weight it. The head weight neurologically fires off a reflex in the spine that helps it regain naturally, like innately. Remember, the body's smart. So when I put something here, it immediately fires this off. There's even backpack conversations, you know, like, oh, kids wearing backpacks on the backside. What does it do? It makes us collapse this way. But they've said, hey, if a kid or a child wears their backpack on the front, what does it immediately do? Make, you got it, it makes us go up. So when we put weight on the front side of our body, all the extensors, all the posterior chain, immediately goes, whoa, I gotta go up like this. Why hasn't someone yes. developed a backpack that you wear on the front? Well, I you think can just flip your backpack. Yeah, you around. just flip your backpack. But right. you know, even better than that would be luggage and things that people are doing. I yeah. don't know. That's a, right. that's a you know, person to person kind of thing. You know, some kids, like I have a lot of kids who are like, can you tell my dad that I don't wanna lug my luggage you know, through school, like they literally don't want to be seen with luggage. That's how you, you know, get your going kid to... beat up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you don't want to be that kid wearing the backpack to the front. You yeah. know? So it's either got to be something new and cool or whatever. But <laughs> either way, that's the reason why we go ahead and do this. We want to reinforce the adjustment and, of course, put the spine in what? An extension. You know, and that's what we're doing here. So, Boom. Nailed it. Nice. 